Okay, Emilio, I know you're a young man, and, but this must have all started somewhere for you. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the early years of Emilio. That, get, paint us a little picture of, of what life was like for you. Siempre el fútbol. Siempre el de niño. I think, I, I think <laughs> let me get this right. Football. Okay, that's good. Now, see, now we're on the same page. I like this. This is good. Siempre el fútbol, pero mi mamá me llevó a la iglesia. My mom took me to church. A los 14 años. At 14 years old. Y ahí sentí la presencia de Dios en mi vida. And there I felt the presence of God in my life. Y cada, cada minuto, cada segundo, le, le estoy muy, muy agradecido con Dios. Uh, every minute of his life, he's more, very sort of dedicated to God. Porque Dios ha hecho muchas bendiciones y, y ha transformado mucha vida a través de mí. Because God has blessed me so much and has done so much in my life. Porque lo que yo le pido al Señor es siempre predicar el Evangelio, predicar la Palabra de Dios. Uh, because I've, uh, I've dedicated my life to bringing the Word of God. So Emilio, um, Honduras, what, what was that? Many of us would, would have never probably even heard of the country, to be honest, over here. What was Honduras like uh, for you growing up and how did that have an effect on you? Lo de ahí, muy bien, lo, lo que pasa es que siempre jugué al fútbol, siempre, siempre, siempre estaba ahí eh, con mi familia muy bien, todo muy bien, pero faltaba algo, que era la presencia de Dios y, y gracias a Dios lo conseguí. Uh, he said it was a really good life, He's, there was always football, um, he had a good family life, um, but there was always something missing and uh, that was the presence of God which he thankfully found. Uh, about 14 year old, years old. So. so, Emilio, in that experience where you went to church with your mum and you felt this presence of God, which is the thing that you felt that you needed, what, uh, what happened at that point or what did you do at that point to, to change from however you were before to this new situation? Yo tengo muchas bendiciones. So much has changed and I've had so much blessings. Y lo más importante que, que mis padres estaban separados. The most important thing was my parents were separated. Y a través que mi madre se fue de la iglesia, mi padre igual, y yo siempre seguí fiel a Dios. ¿Cómo? Mi padre se fue, se separaron, se fue, y yo siempre seguí fiel a Dios. His, his dad went left, but he st stuck in the church and he stayed, carried on going to church and stuff. So. That, that must be really hard uh, to, to keep on in that way without that role model in, in the home. Did you find people there to help mentor you and to help you move on into the things of God? Desde los 15 años yo solo iba solo a la iglesia, caminaba mucho y aprendí mucho a leer la Biblia y eso me ayudó mucho a, a estar más en comunión en la presencia de Dios y luego así en mi país se hablo mucho de Siempre a todo joven que me acerca, no le doy firma, no le doy nada, sino que le hablo de Dios. He said that um, he, he's always done it on his own. He's always gone to church alone. He used to walk quite, quite long distances to get to church. Um, he always read the Bible on his own. And um, he's, uh, when, when he goes back to Honduras and the young people come up to him asking for signatures, he, he won't give that to them. He'll, he'll instead speak to them about God and talk to them about the Bible and stuff. Aquí quiero hacer lo mismo y por eso estoy aprendiendo mucho. He wants inglés. to do the same here with the young people, which is why he's trying to learn English. Ah. <laughs> so, growing up, you're obviously involved in football from, from quite a young age, but also at the age of 14, having this encounter with God. What was the turning point for you? Obviously, you were, you were running into a, a, a reasonable footballing career. You enjoyed doing that sort of thing. Um, what, what happened, and then what happened for when you put God first in your life? A mí siempre el pastor de mi iglesia me dijo que el fútbol y, y la presencia de Dios en mi vida es muy importante porque a través del fútbol yo puedo atraer muchos jóvenes y hablarle cuando ellos vengan a mí. He said that having football and God together, his pastor always taught, taught him that it was really important to have them together in his life because he could bring young people close to him and speak to them about God. 
So when, when for you was the point where you put God first and what happened at that point? Fue la mayor bendición de mi vida. It was the biggest blessing of my life. Todo lo que yo hago, todo se lo, se lo dejo en las manos de Dios y por eso me bendice mucho. Uh, everything I do, I give in the hands of God and that's why he blesses me so much. That's great. <laughs> okay. What, uh, what sort of things did you do to put God first in your life? Es muy, muy difícil. Pero la oración y, el, y aprender de la palabra de Dios es muy importante. He said it's, it's hard to explain, but uh, a lot of prayer and a lot of the Bible, the word of God, um, helped me to do so. That's great. So in, in your experience, you, you, you're making this decision, I'm going to follow God. You then made this choice of, I'm going to put God first by, by praying, by seeking what he wanted, and, and obviously getting pastoral counsel as well. And, and take, gaining their experience to help you move forward in this career in, in football. How, how has God affected your career in football? Because God, we believe, wants to be involved in every part of our lives. A big part of your life is football. So how has God impacted that for you? Es una bendición. Dios me ha dado este talento de jugar a fútbol y por eso siempre levanto mis manos arriba a darle gracias a Dios. He said it's a big blessing um, having God as a part of it, which is why he always runs onto the pitch with his hands in the air. Um, he's basically blessing the game to God. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. <laughs> That's exactly what we do here in church when we worship God. We lift our hands and we, and we, and we commit that time to him. So it's, uh, it's exactly the same. For those of you that don't put your hands up in church, there you go. Take reference from Emilio. You can bless this time in church as well. Uh, you spoke about your pastor, but you also spoke about the kids back in, in Honduras as well. What, uh, why for you has church been important? And I, I know you do a lot of work because we spoke before, uh, you do stuff out in Honduras. Why do you choose the church to, to work through rather than setting up your own big charity and running it in, in a separate way, but you're actually wanting to do it through the church? Porque siempre me saben que que siempre le dejo todo a Dios. Siempre muchos pastores me hablan para que para hacer reuniones para hablarle a muchos jóvenes y siempre ahorita tengo como 10 invitaciones de, de muchos jóvenes y espero estar ahí para predicarles y las bendiciones que Dios ha hecho en mi vida. Sí, porque la, la iglesia reúne a los jóvenes para yo estar ahí. He says that the church basically gets all of the young people together in, in order for him to be able to put these programs into place. Mm. And uh, come on. <laughs> so the, the churches that are across in Honduras, you connect with them, they bring youth together, you're able to share the gospel with them, share what God's done in your life, and then you start seeing them empowered. Is that kind of how it works? Hablarle a los jóvenes, donde yo vaya, en Honduras, me muevo a un lugar y siempre hay muchos jóvenes pidiéndome firma. Y entonces ahí siempre ando con alguien para decirle que primero es hablar de Dios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, and also what he said before, um, the church also empowers him to do that, but um, the fact that he's so well known as a footballer, mm -hmm. them coming and asking for autographs helps him to do that as well, brings them closer. And, and so, uh, using the fame that God's given you to bring glory to God and bring God's fame even more. Como repetí, Dios me ha dado muchas bendiciones y yo por eso tengo que, que honrarlo y alabarlo a Él. Y, es, y hablando mucho de la palabra de Dios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, God's given me so many blessings in that sense, so, which is why he has to um, thank God and pray and dedicate it so much to God, back to him. So if you had, as you do, have a mic and you want to speak to all of these people here, many of them young, some of them not so young, and what, what for you uh, would you want to say to them uh, about knowing God? Es lo más importante para todo ser humano estar en la presencia de Dios. It's the most important thing uh, in your life to have the presence of God. Es mucha diferencia entre ser cristiano y ser del mundo. 
there's a huge difference between being a Christian and not being a Christian. Puede tener todo el dinero del mundo, pero no es feliz como somos los, los hijos de Dios. He said you can have all the money in the world, but you, you, can't, you won't be happy like, the sons of, like us sons of God are. Wow. And so, would your recommendation here this evening be that if people don't have this relationship with God, that they should seek after that and find what you've got? Yo siempre a todo joven, más en mi idioma, en español, siempre le digo que todas las bendiciones, porque muchos jóvenes me dicen, quiero ser como vos, quiero ser todos, y todo fan de, de Celtic siempre me dice, muy buen jugador, todo es por la gracia de Dios. He said, uh, yeah, like, like you were saying before, so many young people come up to him and say, I want to be like you, I want to be like you, um, Celtic fans, and say, say he's such a good player, and he said, it's all thanks to God, it is all thanks to God. Okay, one last question, Emilio. What do the rest of the players in the Celtic team feel about you being a born-again Christian? No solo ellos, yo creo que todos los, de todos los equipos hay un respeto hacia mm -hmm. alguien cristiano. He said, not only from his team, but from all of the football teams, he said there's a real respect at the fact that he is a Christian. Porque le gusta hablar con la gente cristiana más así las, los futbolistas. Because they, they love talking with the Christian people. Yo siempre, todas todo las, las concentraciones, todos los entrenos, siempre le hablo de Dios y siempre ellos les gusta estar hablando conmigo. Aunque es difícil para mí, pero siempre trato de, de hablarles y a ellos les gusta mucho. Mm -hmm. They love talking to him when he, before the games and stuff. He was saying on Friday before the games he always prays and the, the team always comes around and gives him a hug while he's praying, which is pretty cool. So they, they really love that presence. Emilio, we're so blessed to have had you here this evening for just this brief time. We know you've got to get off because I think you're going to go receive another award this evening. Is that correct? God's, <laughs> God's, God's blessing this man, Michael. Lee. Para mí, para para mí es una bendición estar aquí y me gustaría compartir más con con las personas de Escocia que son que me ha tratado como como un hijo de Dios, que eso es lo más importante. He's been a blessing to be here, and uh, he loved to share more with some of you guys, and he said you've all really treated him really well being here. Um. Thank you, Emilio. Let's just Thank give, uh, we have to draw it to a close there, because Emilio does need to head off, and we need to move on with the rest of our meeting here this evening as well. But let's give Emilio one big round of applause, and thank him for his time this evening.